Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's amazing, isn't it, that we are back in church and it's my first time since the lockdown to come back to Foxton. Thank you, Elder Atta, for inviting me. I am humbled to be standing before you and quite thrilled to see faces again in reality. I'm used to seeing people on Zoom and it's never the same, is it? I know we're still socially distancing, but praise God, we are back in the churches again. So lovely to see all of you, and we praise God for that. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for being in our presence. Thank you for wanting to speak to us today. Lord, you are using me as a vessel. May I just be a vessel. May you speak. May we hear. May we understand your word. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray in thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Right, we got some technical problems, so I'm afraid my brother Atta here is going to be the technical man, which I understand he's very good at, so he's going to start doing that. So before, as we start, may I ask you a question, all of you? Has any one of you ever experienced the following? And if you have, you lift your hand up. Being weak, feeling weak feeling guilty, feeling ashamed, feeling afraid, feeling pain, feeling marginalized, feeling betrayed. That puts me in good company because I felt all of those. I felt all of those. Now, my, the title of my sermon today is Restored and Reignited restored and reignited and the key text comes from isaiah 42 verse 3. isaiah 42 verse 3. isaiah 42 is a prophecy with a promise when you read it from the new king james version it says a bruised reed he will not break in smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. I don't know how many of you understood that. I found the word read sometimes might be difficult for those who know nothing about reeds. And flux to me didn't mean anything. I had to Google it. So I went to the New International Reader's Version. And it says, he will not break a bent twig. Twig. And a twig, we all know what it is. Okay, he will not put out a dimly burning flame. He will be faithful and make everything right. This prophecy was being made by Isaiah to the children of Israel. The children of Israel had had their tables turned. These are the children of Israel whom God had taken out of Israel of Egypt and performed so many wonderful miracles on their way. He had parted the Red Sea for them, provided water from the rock, given them manna on the desert, led them and guided them. And these are the same people that were now finding themselves in captivity in Babylon. And you can imagine, we all have said we feel broken. You can imagine how broken they felt at that time. These were the people that God were an example of what God could do to his people, how he will lead them, how he will bless them, how they can be a shining light to the world. But they were now useless. They now felt that they had been left alone. A bruised reed, a reed is a type of a grass. But before we go there, I will tell you, I love going to walk. So the next slide, please. So I'll lift my thumb and then we can, okay, all right. I like going for walks and I usually go to Green Woods for walks. And one of my walks uh, along the path, footpath, I saw a tree which had fallen. And that's the picture on the, on the right there. You can see the base of it. There are a few roots 
that are actually still in the ground. And as I walked along and went to the front of the tree, I realized, so that's the other picture on the other side, I realized actually that the branches of this tree are growing, have got leaves in them, and they're actually just as tall as the rest of the trees around them. That to me just gave me that wow moment. The wow moment of what can happen sometimes when you still continue to be grounded in God. Today we read, we were listening to the story of Joseph, how he was uprooted from his family, but he remained grounded in God. And because he remained grounded in God, he grew. He didn't lose his luster because of that. So in spite of the fact that sometimes people may be broken, the fact that the children of Israel were broken because now they were in captivity doesn't necessarily mean that they were completely out. And that's why this verse is very, very pertinent to them because it says God was going to redeem them. He was going to redeem their brokenness. He was going to bring them out. So reeds are usually used for building as a roofing material or for making baskets. And for musicians like my brother David, they could be made for musical instruments. So reeds can be very useful, but they are very feeble and fragile. Just as humanity is fragile and feeble. And so Israel was being, at that time, they felt they had been broken, they were bent, they couldn't really be productive, they couldn't do, be useful at all. But God says he still had use for them. He still had use for them. And because he still had use for them, he was not going to break them. He was not going to destroy them completely. He was going to preserve them and make sure they continued to still shine the light. And the next part is he will not put out a, a, a dimly burning flame. You know, when flames are going out, they give out smoke. I don't know if you guys have used candles. Mm. It's smoke and smoke chops. It's not good, is it? But when a flame is bright, it brightens the environment around it. It brightens the environment around it. It gives warmth. It makes you see what's going on around you. And God was telling the children of Israel, even at that time in captivity, that he still was going to rekindle. He wasn't going to put them out. He was going to rekindle them. And that message is the same to us who have felt broken. You see, the light is very important in everything. And when a light goes out, it means that the darkness that comes on will make everybody lose their happiness, their joy, even the enthusiasm to do anything. So dimly burning lights represent a loss of hope feeling hopelessness. And sometimes that's also accompanied by a loss of faith. Like Joseph could have thought, actually, I have been sold as a slave. I'm going to be a slave and stay there. But we know the story of David and the fact that things changed. You see, when the spirit is broken, in Proverbs 18, verse 48, it says, a healthy spirit conquers adversity. When your spirit is good, you can have the hope and you can look forward to recovery, even when you are ill. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, but what can you do when the spirit itself is crushed? When the light goes out, what can you do? You can't do anything, can you? You feel totally, totally defeated, totally broken. The psalmist in Psalm 40, 42 verse 5 says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, 
for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. That hope, in spite of adversity, will give you a better countenance because it will give you the hope that God is in control. Mm -hmm. You see, there is no wound or vulnerability that God doesn't understand. He can handle us with care. When the flame in us is about to go out, instead of roughly moving us so that the flame completely goes out, he tenderly cares for us and makes it burn brighter. But we have to allow him to do that. We have to allow God to help us to do that. In Isaiah 61, verse 1, we are given hope. So for the children of Israel, in Isaiah 61, verse 1, there is a hope that is given to them because the mission of Christ was pronounced before, many years before he was born. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and that's Christ, because the Lord has anointed me. And listen to this, what has he been anointed to do? To preach good news and true tidings to the poor. Not just the poor in material things, but the poor in spirit, the broken people, the people that need revival. He goes on to say, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. We've only put our hands up to say we have been broken. And how wonderful it is to know that we can be healed. And it must have been wonderful for the children of Israel to hear that actually God was on their side and he was going to heal them, even though they felt bruised at that time. He goes on to say, to proclaim liberty to the captives. When you feel helpless, you feel in captive, and you feel like you're in captivity, you are bound, you are feeling unable to do anything because you are in prison. But the promise comes and says, and opening the prison to those who are bound. So whether we are feeling broken, whether we are feeling helpless, whether we are feeling rejected, whether we are feeling guilty, whether we are feeling sinful, whether we feel that we are actually totally unredeemable, God is saying that there is a master, the Messiah. For the time of the children of Israel, he was to come. For us, he has come, he has been, and we are actually experiencing what he has done. So it's up to us now to remember what to do. And that is found in book John 3, verse 16. We all, 14 and 16, we all know these verses, especially verse 16. You know, when the children of Israel were in the desert, they had a calamity that befell them. And they had to look up at a serpent so that they could be healed. And verse 14 says, and as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. I showed you the tree that had fallen. Most of the roots had come up, but a few of the roots were still there. It's those roots that were still grounded in that could continue to feed the rest of the tree so that the branches wouldn't die. The same happened with the children of Israel. They had people who stayed rooted in like Daniel, who kept holding on to God. The same applies to us today. There are some of us who are spiritually so mature, so well fed, so well fed and their roots are so grounded. It's that duty they have to ensure that the rest of the tree still survives. Mm -hmm. So it is our responsibility to make sure when you are grounded and somebody's broken, you help that person who's broken by lifting Jesus up, mm -hmm. by reminding that person that actually they are not a reed that's broken, that bruise can be healed. They are not a flame that's about to go out, that flame can be rekindled because Jesus Christ is alive. And it goes on to say, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Shall we complete this together? That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And it goes on to say, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to but through him that we might be saved. So he didn't come to condemn, but to save. The same people who had rebelled against God, God still loved them enough to redeem them and to say, my children, I want you to come back. I want you, your bruises to be healed. And I want your dim lights to be bright again. Okay. So Jesus Christ came and we know that. But he came at a price, a price that you and I should have paid. He came at a price that is well described in Isaiah 53, verses 3 to 5. Because you see, although he was part of the Godhead and he came with a mission to help us, he wasn't really received as he should have been. Isaiah 53 says to us, he was despised and rejected by men, the same people he'd come to help. He was a man of sorrows, and most of us said we've been sorrowful at some stage, and he was acquainted with grief. But the people around him at that time hid their faces from him, just like you and I hide our faces from him. Some people don't even want to be mentioned to be told that they are Christians in public. Who are we? What are we doing to our Christ? Are we proclaiming him and showing the world who he is? Are we proclaiming him to the reed that is bruised that needs to be healed? To the lights that are now about to go out to remind them that actually that savior was there for you and for me. Your bruise needs healing and it can only heal when you look up to him. It goes on to say, surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Has anybody ever had anybody carry their grief or their sorrow? Mm -hmm. We can share, can't we? When you are in grief, you have people come to you. When you've lost your loved one, I've lost a few. People come and they come and pay their condolences to you. Mm. But they cannot carry that burden for you. Christ carried it for us. They say, he goes on to say, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised. And that's where that bruised reed comes from, for our iniquities. And by his stripes, we are healed. So our bruises are healed. Our sinful bruises are healed because of what Christ has done. And verse 11 in Isaiah 53 also goes to say, he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. Is Jesus, as he sits in heaven at this moment as our advocate, do you think when he looks down, he is satisfied with the labor of his soul that he did for me, that he did for you? Is he satisfied with the labor of his soul? If he isn't, what do you think we should do? Is that fair? At the end of the day, he had nothing to lose. God could have recreated the world, but he decided he wanted to save you and I. And by his stripes, we are healed. You see, he is there to justify you and me. And we need to do him the justice of acknowledging him, of being obedient to God, of 
from enabling him to heal our bruises, enabling him to rekindle our lives when we become hopeless, when our faith fades, when we lose hope, because he is our God and he is a God who cares and will always continue to care for us. Now in Romans 5, verse 6 to 8, can somebody read that for us? Is there anybody with a Bible that can read Romans 5, verse 6 for us? Anyone? Brother At, I think you are closer to the mic. Can you talk to me? Okay, six to eight. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the unborn. For scarcely for a righteous man in one die. Yet perhaps a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us. And that's why we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. So he didn't wait for us to repent. He died for us that we don't die the eternal death. Mm. That's how much God cares and loves you and I. Because of his wounds, you and I are healed. It goes on to say, one cannot die for a righteous person, but only die for somebody who needs redemption. So God has demonstrated his love for us, and it is up to us to demonstrate our love for him. My, the title of my sermon is, do you remember it? Restored and Rekindled. Okay. So there are two things that happen in life. There is the physical loss that we may have, but there is also the spiritual loss, which is the most dangerous one. That's the most dangerous one because then that means we have eternal death. And this is where we need rekindling. We need to be rekindled so that no matter what we are going through, no matter how broken we are, in this world where we live in, we will be broken. In this world where we live in, we will have losses. In this world where we live in, we will be sick, we will have diseases, we will have need, financial need, need for companionship, need for everything. And when we have that, sometimes people so focus on what they think they need to have in this world and forget to focus on the one who can rekindle their lives. So we need not lose our hearts. We need not lose heart. In Psalms 27, verse 13, David says, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. That's hope. When you have hope and you believe that your God is able, you will not lose heart. Because when you lose heart, you lose all. So let us not lose our heart, but wait on the Lord and be of good courage so that he will strengthen our hearts. And David continues, repeat and says, wait, I say on the Lord. Because it's only when we wait on the Lord that our bruises can be healed, that our flame that's about to go out can be rekindled. But what should we do though? Will God just come and do it for everyone? Yes, he can, but there is a caveat to that. The caveat is that we need to obey his commandments. We need to obey the rules, otherwise, 
we might find ourselves bruised in continuing to go to the same things that re-bruise us and re-bruise us until those things actually kill us. We may find ourselves going to the same things that continually want to put out our flame until that flame goes out completely. So we need to obey God's laws and commandments. And we need to trust in God. And we need to let God be God. Because we have a promise in Malachi 4, verse 2, which says, to those who fear the Lord, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. How wonderful it is. Can you imagine when you have been in the most horrible pain, somebody tells you that healing is coming and it will come on the condition that you believe on the one that is going to heal you. That's what we've been told. And it says, you shall go out and grow fat like store-fed cows. And these are calves that have been looked after properly and they have had enough nourishment and they are joyful. So no matter what we are going through in our lives, in this world full of trouble, in this world where we feel broken, where we feel abandoned, where we feel guilty, where we feel useless, God is always there to help us. God, there is no wound that he doesn't understand. All we need to do is trust him with our fragility, our feebleness. All we need to do is follow his ways. I know that no matter how deep our bruises, he has the sound that will make it better. No matter how dim our light is, as long as we look up to him, he will rekindle us. He will put that flame back in and the oil that will make us come back alive again and shine the light. So when the light starts shining, it should radiate to others. I'm sure the children, you are all familiar with this song, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I'll let it shine, let it shine. Let us let that light shine. Because God is able to rekindle us. God is able to help us to shed the light. Let it not sh shine under a bushel. Mm. Let it shine on a hill. So that the others may hear about God may hear the hope of this bruising healing that will come. They may also feel and experience the joy of hope again, in spite of what this world may throw at them. So my message to you, my dear friends, is that like that tree which fell, the bigger parts of the roots were uprooted. The few roots that were still there helped the remaining branches to prosper. Mm. May you and I be the roots that continue to be in the ground with God, grounded in his laws, grounded in faith, grounded in hope, grounded in the need to share the joy of Christ with others. And as we do that, May we flourish and may the branches that remain just be as tall as if that tree never fell at all. May God help us as we become restored, as we become rekindled, and as we share the light with those around us. That's my prayer today for you and for me. Amen. Amen.